Hi, it's Jeff Constable from the CADARN Learning Portal and I'm here today with Victoria Wright at the Aberystwyth University Department of Psychology. And Victoria is going to tell us a bit about her use of Blackboard for her students. Uh, hi, I'm Victoria. I'm a lecturer in the Department of Psychology. Um, one of the courses that I teach is a first year module in Research Methods and Statistics. And what we did this year in response to some student feedback is we decided to redevelop the module to make it a bit more sort of online based, a bit more interactive. Um, and to do that, we made use of Blackboard's exemplary course rubric, which is sort of a structure for organising online content through Blackboard um, to take into account a variety of factors that affect um, students' learning. Okay. Um, would you mind showing us a bit of that then? Please? Yeah, Sorry. sure. So um, the first thing that we did with the module was we tried to make it really um, very user friendly, very nice looking I guess. Um, so when the students actually first come to the course, when they first log in, the first thing they see is a start here page. So right from the outset we kind of tried to establish that this was a module where they had to be very active in what they were doing. They couldn't just have a lecture once a week and forget about it until the following week. They needed to be doing something all the time, right from before we even met for our first lecture. So straight away we introduced the course and we provide a link already to the first piece of learning content. So straight away, as soon as they log in, when they register, before their first set of lectures, they already know there's something they need to be doing to prepare. Um, we also gave them some activities to welcome them to the course and to make them feel kind of quite involved and part of a, a group because it's quite a big module for us within psychology. It's about 100 students, which is, is, is reasonably big for us. So we created a sort of orientation pen cast, which basically explained all about the course, you know, the different types of assessment, how they would be assessed through the course, what the expectations were what we expect from them, what they can expect from us, feedback. Um, we also straight away give them the module handbook so they can find out in more detail and they can download that if they want then so they've always got a copy of key information. And because this is a module that involves um, statistical component and that is something that can make a lot of students very very nervous. So what we decided to do this year was we decided to use that kind of um, statistics anxiety in our favour. So we included a questionnaire here that they complete in Blackboard, it's completely anonymous, and they ask them several questions about how they feel about having to study statistics, and then the data that we capture from that, they use that in their very first practical session. So the data that they use is real, it means something to them because they've collected it, they've contributed to it, and they carry out some statistical procedures on it, so it's all very sort of hands-on with data that they've actually collected themselves. Mm -hmm. It seems you get the students used to using online methods quite early on in the course as well, so they become comfortable with, with that approach. Yes, that's what we try to do. Um, just the way that this course is run, um, the number of lectures or contact hours we've got, I'm sure lots of people find this, that there's, there's almost too much stuff that you need to cover. So one of the things that we did this year for the first time is, although this is a course that is largely face-to-face -face, uh, taught, we divided our content into units and the first unit is entirely online, so there was no lecture associated with this. So again, we're making it clear from the start that the content on Blackboard is just as important as whatever they do in lectures, whatever they do in practicals, so they really have to take responsibility for their own learning, they need to manage what they're doing and make sure that for each unit they complete the learning activities that they are assigned to go with that content as well. So yeah, we, you know, we tried to make it clear right from the start that although we've got the face-to-face -face lectures, we've got our practicals, that this is another channel for them not just to sort of have content through but to interact through, to be assessed through, to test their own learning, their own knowledge, to get some feedback. So we, we're trying to make sure that they value this sort of type of learning just as much as they do sort of the lecture or the practical mm -hmm. or any other sort of mode of delivery we use. Is this a typical unit we're looking at at the moment? Yeah, so we kept the design of the units really simple. Every unit is exactly the same. You always get a little explanation at the top um, that says in this unit you will and then you get a brief summary of what you're going to be doing. 
We also made sure we always provided a link to the next unit straight away. So if there were some very keen students, immediately they can think, what am I doing next week? What am I doing next week? So for those that wanted that, it's there. So they can see how things relate to each other. We've also, as far as possible, we've tried to include the details in Welsh as well. So we've got some students who are studying this module through the medium of Welsh. So for all of our units, we tried to provide that information in English and Welsh. We provide them the learning objectives. Um, so those are the course level learning objectives that we'll be addressing in this unit. Um, and then you get some learning activities. So these are the things that you need to do um, to kind of, you know, access the content, to test your knowledge, to show that you are, have taken part in this unit. And they'll be listed there. So for this unit, there was no lecture or practical, but for units where there was a lecture or practical, it would say, go to the lecture on this date, or once that date had passed, here is the panopto of this lecture um, for you to access. And then the activities, they are all stuff that can be done through Blackboard and online. So for example, one of the most important things for psychologists is um, a good understanding of ethics, which is why we started with this. So we link them straight away, we ask them to read the BPS Code of Ethics, we give them some textbook reading, using the university's eBrewery subscription so we can link directly to the books from inside Blackboard so there's no excuse, there's no saying the book wasn't in the library, I didn't buy a copy, it's right there for them. We've got some videos for this uh, module, so these are YouTube videos of uh, psychologists talking about uh, research that has ethical implications. And then finally to kind of just get them thinking about what they knew about ethics um, we set up a blog for this week where they had to reflect on some ethical sort of dilemmas, if you like. And I think it's really important for us to do that quite early on because with psychology you get a real variety of students arriving in those first few weeks. Some of them will have studied psychology formally before, but a lot of them won't. Um, they've all got useful knowledge, no matter where it came from. So it's a nice way for everyone to share what they already know, to share what they've been learning through this to interact with each other and start to form as a group really and get a sense of interacting with other students you know while they're engaged in learning. So that's like a, a kind of a bulletin board or online forum? Yeah exactly, um, it's, it's just a blog mm -hmm. um, and all that they had to do was I'd set some questions as sort of talking points um, and then they were just asked to respond to some of those. They were also asked to make a post of their own but also then to respond to somebody else's post, to try to develop conversations about various issues. Um, so it wasn't, it was trying to sort of avoid just turn up, write something and leave. It's about trying to involve other students in what you're talking about and getting involved in their conversations. Because there's, there's actually surprise in doing that, the kind of variety of existing knowledge that was out there. Um, I think it was a very useful thing for the students to, to do that right at the start. It really put a lot of nerves at ease, I think, you know. Is that moderated in any way, or do you, do you take part in that discussion? I take part in that. Um, we've also got on this module, we have some postgraduate demonstrators who um, also get involved. And then we also have some uh, second year undergraduate students who um, performed really well on this module themselves last year. And they are acting as Blackboard mentors, which means they get involved in discussions online. So we're just checking for, you know, that there's a good tone in the conversation, that people are staying on topic, that, you know, everybody's being sort of polite and respectful and supportive. And, you know, we haven't had any sort of problems, you know, so far. Um, but also, you know, it helps to kind of keep the conversation going to have a member of staff or a postgrad or somebody there just to kind of put some prompts now and again and keep the conversation moving. Is this assessed at all? This part isn't. Um, their coursework is some formal research reports at the moment. We are thinking about developing this for next year um, because what the way that it works at the moment is if they complete all the learning activities that I set them across the whole year they'll get some bonus marks at the end of the year. Um, but it's optional at the moment so we are thinking about making these things, you know, actually count towards um, their final overall module mark because I think, you know, I think students might see even more value in it then when they think, you know, actually I've got to do really well in this because at the moment I think sometimes there's an expectation of as long as I've done it because it's not marked, you know, it doesn't matter what I say. So although we've had some really good responses, I think if we 
formalised it even more, you know, I think it would raise the quality, you know, again. Um, have you, since you uh, implemented the, the developed uh, online course, have you had any feedback from students? Um, yeah, I mean, I've had quite a bit of feedback from students. Um, in our uh, institute, so in Human Sciences, we recently conducted some focus groups with students that were run by the head of our institute. Um, and she was interested in having conversations with students about lots of aspects of uh, our provision. But um, our module was mentioned by a couple of students in particular as being a really kind of standout module in terms of the way it, it's presented and the way that it uses Blackboard. So I mean that, that was really nice feedback for us to have. Um, I've also had some feedback in emails from students because I've sort of asked them informally if you've got any comments, whatever they might be just send them to me. We've also got a mechanism for them to leave anonymous feedback, you know, if they like. Um, and we've had some really, really good positive feedback about it. And I think it, it's pretty weird, but one of the ways I think I know it's working well is I don't get that many emails saying, where do I find this and how do I do this? Because it's when students can find things and they know what they're doing, you know, I think that's when it works really well. So we have had some formal feedback um, and we will get our end of module feedback which will sort of hopefully be just as positive. Brilliant. Thanks very much.